I'm Richard Schultz, and I've been teaching Old Testament at Wheaton College in Wheaton, Illinois, for 29 years. Dr. Richard Schultz. Richard, good to see you. Welcome back to Thank Exegetically you. Speaking. Thank you. It's good to be here. We are face-to-face -face in uh, jolly old England, at uh, north of Oxford, at a place called Yarnton Manor, and we've just been a part of a conference for the last few days together, an Old Testament, then a New Testament conference. But uh, I'm glad that you were a part of the Old Testament side, as I was a part of the New Testament side. And we were talking about wisdom. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about today, aren't we? Yes. Now, Proverbs 22.6 is where we're going to camp out for a few minutes, and you're going to help us understand it better. Exegesis uh, has a lot of different elements to it. There's kind of a contextual, big picture. But then it also sometimes matters when you get down into the sentence or into the clause what words do mean, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about Proverbs 22.6. What, as, as, you, as you pick this for today, what, was your, what were your thoughts? Well, again, it's been one of those verses that's been listed in books of one of the most misinterpreted and misapplied verses in the whole Bible and certainly in Proverbs, because it's been used by Christian psychologists to develop and promote various theories of child raising. Um, and it's probably promoted some guilt in parents uh, who didn't see the verse prove true in their own training of their own children. Uh, and so I think it's important to understand not only what a proverb is and isn't, but also the translation and, and interpretation options. Hmm. Well, let me go ahead and read it in English. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's the Christian standard version. That's the Christian standard, yeah. So that's that's the one I, when I think back on my young adulthood, that's the way I learned it. I may have memorized that text mm -hmm. very close, maybe from the King James so let's start very quickly. What is a proverb? Can you well, can you well, define a proverb? It? Is some would say it's sound by theology, but it really is a, a way of expressing a truth, a biblical truth, uh, in, with a punch, uh, short, uh, mm. memorably, mm. Uh, and also really provokes you to think mm. and try to see how it would apply to mm. your situation or someone else's. And every culture that I can think of has proverbs. Sure. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, in America, we had uh, poor Richard's Almanac, sure. and we had Ben Franklin, you know, a penny saved is a penny earned, we, we heard. And so that's very punchy, very short, yes. yep. but you, you hope it teaches economy mm -hmm. to the next generation. One of the difference is the biblical proverb tends to have two lines, uh, poetic par parallelism, and so it's usually a two-line. A lot of American proverbs are one-liners. Yeah. Or even one word, or yeah. one phrase, no pain, no gain. Yeah, right. <laughs> Something like that. All right, so our first line, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Take that apart for it. What is your concern about it as you look well, at it? Well, the first concern is train up a child. Okay. Uh, both the verb train and the word child. Um, those who use it, I know there's a well-known American psychologist who sees this as zero to six years of age. Uh -huh. uh, the word here in Hebrew is na'ar, uh, and the na'ar is one of the main addressees of the book of Proverbs, according to chapter one, and he's the one who can study the, the Proverbs for himself, uh, and he's see. also the one who's warned against the temptation of the loose woman. Uh, so this is probably not zero to six. Uh, <laughs> this is probably a youth. And so the translations that say a youth, uh, like the Christian Standard Bible, uh, lad is even a little, probably, I learned this, it's train up a child, right? I so say this, I remember, this is yeah. really probably a, 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 a young teen, that he's talking about okay. in that verse, using how that word is used. So maybe eleven to fifteen year old, something yeah, like probably. that. Yeah, probably. Okay, so trying up a, a young, a, a young a person, uh, yeah, yeah, youth. I right. mean, again, that's the, it's the main address of the book of Proverbs. That's right. not in zero right. to six. Right. Exactly. So uh, in terms of that, the word has a wide semantic range. If you see how it's used throughout, uh, okay. David was uh, a youth when he killed Goliath. So that's the same word that's used for David when he. Oh, okay. Goliath. Okay. So he wasn't zero to six. No, not <laughs> at all. Have, we don't really know how old he was. He was the youngest in the family, but he wasn't clearly zero to six. Right. So a youth is probably a good translation. Okay. So um, train up a youth in the way right. he should go. Yeah. What about the he? Some people. Well, let's start with the word. He, she. Let's start with the word train. Okay. Let's begin. Uh, the word train actually in Hebrew is Hanak, 
And that's the word we get Hanukkah from, uh, the, hmm. the, the rededication of the temple after it was desecrated uh, in the intertestamental period. It's used of the temple dedication in 1 Kings 8. So it's dedicating buildings. And it can also talk about like a soldier who's kind of trained. Uh, and hmm. so it means something a bit more specialized than just educate. Hmm. So it's kind of in terms of there's a the ceremonial side of that if you see it with a building, but with hmm. a person, they're kind of being trained hmm. for a particular right. task in a role. You're being dedicated to that task. Right, in and it's way. interesting, yeah. on Ted Hildebrandt, who uh, I think is now retired from Gordon College, did a, a lengthy study of this, and he said that these three terms, train uh, and youth and way, really have a semantic range, but hmm. if you're actually going with a more specific usage that would be typical in the Proverbs, he would say it means something like, if you're charged with the training of a crown prince of England, mm. his way is already set for him. You know what Prince William it is going to be, right? Right. So his way is set, and you are, in a sense, heading him down that path as best you can. Prepare him for that, because even when he's old, he can't shed royalty, Oh, okay. I mean, so in a sense, he says, this is specifically uh, saying, prepare him for the role that he's going to be fulfilling in the rest of his life. Mm. So you're preparing him. Uh, the psych Christian psychologists say, according to his bent, uh, what are his skills, what are his interests, right. cheer him on and, and head him on that route. Right. The other mm. possibility uh, from the context is that his way is God's way, right? His mm. way, because in Proverbs, there's only two ways. There's the way of wisdom and righteousness, and there's the way of folly and wickedness, and it's the way that he should go is the path of wisdom and righteousness. Uh -huh. So that's kind of heading him. I mean, it's the metaphor of the path, which is one of the common metaphors in all of Scripture, but mm -hmm. especially in wisdom, Psalm 1, right? Mm -hmm. You're heading him on the way where the trajectory that he should head, uh, and it's not about... His individual personality and inclinations. Let and him things. discover himself, it's kind really of thing. Heading him in the route, getting him on the path of wisdom, and he'll he'll stay there. And it's interesting. Fee Stewart in the, the the How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth give a little different take on this, uh, and they actually have rabbinical support for it. Saying they say basically, choose your rut carefully. You're going to be traveling that rut for a long way. So there was a, a Jewish interpretation uh -huh. that said, um, if you basically let him have his own way, that's the way he might live for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So it is open to say, you are trying to head this young person in the route he should head in. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, again, Proverbs really talk about probabilities and likelihoods, not certainty. Mm. Uh, but hopefully he will stay in that route once he's been headed there mm. and realizes the path of wisdom and righteousness is the right path to be on. And hopefully he'll stay on that the rest of his life. But if you actually indulge him and let him head on his way, in the sense that he might actually end up on the path of folly and wickedness for the rest of his life. Yeah. So that's kind of where Stuart uh, takes it. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So uh, when it says when he is old, yeah, what, what does that does that mean? Does that mean middle age? Does that mean a senior? Uh, does that mean uh, well, in his twenties? What is that? The, does yeah, that the, the verb is, is, is a con, which is the word for an elder, right? So you have various Hebrew words for age areas, like a gibor is this person the, the rigor of life, or the the generic adam or ish, which is male. Um, so Cain really saying when he gets older. Uh, so just really talking about an aging person, right? Oh. So this is a, a lifelong, you are in actually preparing him for a lifelong trajectory. I like that image. A lifelong of a, journey. A lo, lo, like that image of a rut. You, you get in this yeah, rut. Well, and to tell you what, you, 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 can't, you can't get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> right? I've, I've had my bike wheel sometimes yeah, in yeah. a rut, and you can't get out of it. Right. You turn, and you may have a... You you break may, your arm. Yeah, you yeah. break your arm. That's exactly right. That <laughs> happened to you, as I remember. my brother, yeah. 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 My brother happened uh, to Gary Burge. Yeah. 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 My colleagues. It happens. Yeah, yeah, it happens. That's a fascinating reading, this text. And I think the other thing to remember is that Proverbs are not intended, they are not binding God. Uh, they right. are not, these are these are observations, and the exceptions don't undercut or destroy the rule. They actually prove the rule, because if you are actually doing the right thing, according to Proverbs, I mean, you are likely to avoid a lot of pitfalls, mm -hmm. uh, 
t- sins uh, that will crash you, mm-hmm. right? uh, damage your life. Uh, but it's a fallen world full of fallen people, right. uh, and you're not guaranteed. So it should not be a verse that heaps guilt upon parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and some would say it's a promise that, well, sooner or later he's going to come back. Well, it's not really saying that. Yeah. Um, but the goal is that you devote yourself to kind of dedicating him, in a sense, uh, in the path that he should mm-hmm. go with the goal that that will be a lifelong trajectory. Yeah. Boy, I've got a lot of questions now about this. I've got to talk to you more about this. Okay. On another occasion, okay. Dr. Richard Schultz, thanks for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. You're welcome. It was great to see Richard Schultz again here at Yarnton. I miss him and all the Wheaton faculty. Richard always has insights into the scripture because of his deep dive into the Hebrew. I want to thank Ian Rosine, Rebecca Larson, Jess Dugan, and our Greek guru up in Wheaton, Dr. John Lonsma. That team works together beautifully to make this podcast, uh, you know, what it is today. Check out the show notes if you'd like to study Greek or Hebrew at Wheaton College. And if you have questions, be sure to you know let us know about those. Here is how to be in touch, exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. We, we're, we're grateful. Until next time, I'm David Capes. Thank you for listening.